I mean, what the fuck are we doing where where the bootleggers have to re master the tracks that the professional artists are putting out? <laughs> Isn't it a time to be alive? What the fuck is happening? How ass backwards is this world that the bootleggers have to re EQ the tracks. Well, this isn't the first and, time and, this has happened. And the bottle service girls are the ones that are on the fucking flyers. Oh, yeah. Can we talk about that? Oh, uh, yeah. Nothing makes me more mad. Nothing makes me more mad because it just goes along with like the whole vibe of this city that is materialistic and, and, money driven and you don't have to have any sort of skill whatsoever to to get respect like in my world i want i want to know what you can do what do you offer what can you bring to the table what kind of skill have you acquired over your life that is going to make me say damn you fucking put work in and and have have created something cool or do something or whatever like just to have a a nice car doesn't do it like to to go to a dealership and put down a sack of money and leave with a car is the same concept as going to walgreens and pulling out my wallet and leaving with a pack of gum it's the same skill set i agree you know what i mean like i'm a car connoisseur you have not of purchased vehicles from the dealership cars you put in some work bust your knuckles up build something beautiful unique get in a fucking putting a down payment on a lamborghini truck and painting it or having it painted orange or green does not fucking make you cool it do, it doesn't there's but no skill involved there's nothing in houston there. that makes you very cool but that's what i'm saying that's that's it's all it all works together and i don't get it and i hate it and it it makes me angry <laughs> and I want to fucking light places on fire, and I want to shoot people with flamethrowers, and I just, I don't know what to do. I need to start playing GTA Online or something. That's what it is. If they have the, the Lamborghini trucks on the GTA Online, you can take out all your frustrations. Uh, well, all right, all right. Battle raps, because I've shaken grown men to the point that they can't even face their own friends. Uh, that's why they rhyme about jewels, not life, because the ice on which they skating is so thin. We are live, my friend. <sighs> Welcome back. Yeah, episode 67. The kids are back. Back in H-Town. Back, uh, I missed the last episode. You yeah, with Chicago. Apollo. With Apollo. Shout you were sad because you, you actually said that you would have sucked the dick for nine grand instead of ten. I know. I, if we're having a bidding war, I wanted to get in on that and fucking, you know, win the prize. Some people hit me up and said, uh, next time I see you, I got ten grand for you. I mean, it's not that hard to find somebody to pay ten grand. Especially when you're talking about gays, because most gays are pretty rich. For a dick suck that does not include completion. Oh, it didn't include complete. I see. I didn't watch the whole episode. I got to be honest. Yeah, it was. That was the whole thing. It was like if well, if I if I don't if I just gotta put it in my mouth a little bit, ten k. Well, not see that, that big that's of a deal. wrong. Well, the, uh, let me tell you something. If I were well, if a person was to pay a prostitute, the prostitute didn't give you completion. The prostitute's not getting paid. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That so was if you're the, the prostitute thing. in this case, you're not getting paid. Well, no, that was the whole thing. It was like well, we were deciding on what the parameters were for the dick suck. Okay. And and I said, do I have to finish? Like, do I have to take a fucking load in my mouth? And he said, no. And I was like, well, huh. if I'm just in the lip thing. Yeah. If I'm just playing the skin flute a little bit, I'll I'll, I'll do it for 10K. Quick little 10K come up. Yeah, whatever. Ain't whatever no thing for the sleep. kid. Whatever, as long as you can sleep. You know what I'm saying? I've thing, fucking bro. eaten a hot dog, a popsicle, a hoagie, a Jimmy John sandwich. It's it's not far off. Except, you, whatever. You know what? <laughs> whatever you want to do, dog. Live your life. I'm, I'm just saying. I I was trying to be as realistic as I mean, possible. I mean, I was gonna say, but then you'd be gay. But you're already gay, so you're there. You're fine. That's what I'm saying, bro. You're good. It's uh, it's a different life. I mean, I'm living a completely new life. I don't even I don't even know who I am anymore. I'll yeah. suck a dick for 10k. Do your thing, my boy. Do your <laughs> thing. But the people are probably tired of hearing about you sucking dick and ready to hear something else. What uh What else has been going on lately? 
Uh, just being sober, you know. How is sobriety going for you, my boy? It's actually ruining my life, to be completely honest. It's falling I'm, apart I'm, at the seams, huh? I've worked really hard at controlling my bad eating habits because mm. that is my ultimate vice. So that we just distracted you from your vice. The weed helped a lot to to keep under control my my eating, my See, health. That, like that's like, so counterintuitive of what I would think weed. Because when I smoke weed, I just want to eat everything. Yeah, yeah. Does weed just like awaken your inner self to be like, stop being a fucking compulsive fat fuck? Yeah, I mean it. It helps me. Like if I get high, it slows it all down. I can really think, and my thoughts are like. You don't really want to do that. You're going to feel like shit if you do that. You know what I mean? It's like the little voice in my head is like, just enjoy this high. Take this little burst of anxiety that we've gotten and and channel it into something. So you think your ultimate Product- advice is food? Oh, there's no doubt about it. My ultimate advice is food because... I was set, I was set up that way because I never drank or smoked. So that was your before. So that was like that was it. I, I you know most people I think that the things that affect their life the most are the the habits that are ingrained in them the deepest. Yeah. And if I spent the first twenty five years of my life not drinking or smoking, eating was the vice that's the deepestly ingrained thing that i have in me and i think that's very brave of you to 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 admit because i too i say my deepest vice is masturbation eating and masturbation has actually been quite the journey over the last 14 days that's that's the fucking achilles heel i gotta fucking avoid porn at all costs because the kid likes it. It's a good time. It's kid a kid likes time. a good jerking. <laughs> and I try and limit that, you know what I'm saying? Because I I've what you know it's bad when you know it's a problem. Yeah. And you're like like everybody jerks off, right? But when you know it's an issue, you're like, then that's probably an issue. It's uh it's definitely not good. It's it's tough because like you know like it's sort of like food, right? Well, not really, because food, like, you need it. There's no way that you could well, just go without it. You know, well, if, if alcohol is your is your issue and you have to get rid of it, you can completely get rid of it and never do it and be completely fine in terms of, like, actual human life does not need to survive off of alcohol. Caloric intake you yeah. need for human life. Yeah. I was going to relate the same to masturbation, but you don't really need it. I don't it's know. not I've, a survival. I, well, I have heard, and again, this is just through uh, word of mouth because I've never gone long enough to know if this is the truth. But I've heard <laughs> that if you don't expel semen from your testicles, you can get actually a clog in the uh, whatever the fucking tube is that carries it, mm-hmm. the urethra. Because I, I had a friend in high school, and I don't know if this is true or not, but he swore up and down it was that he actually got a... Uh, a clog in, in the whatever the fucking tube is. I'm not a scientist, right? Uh, whatever the tube is that carries the the nut got clogged because he wasn't masturbating because his mother had passed away and he was just like not like jerking off at all. He was mourning her death by not masturbating. Yeah, well, you know when you go through a life changing experience, it kind of pulls your mind away from masturbation. So, anyways, he didn't masturbate for a long time, and this ended up happening. And he had to go to the doctor, and they. And because he had a, one of his testicles was like swelling up. I'm telling you. This, I think this is like a freak case, not like a standard everyday thing. You might want to look and, into and, it because I, I got to like, imagine. I feel like it's one I of feel those like things it's a, that a natural thing. But it's you know what's unnatural is the porn. The porn is the unnatural part. Yeah. I mean, Even we the nut. I feel like every animal fucking humps pillows. You got a nut. We talked about this with Jeremy. It was yeah. like like you can definitely masturbate. um uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, with without, it's like, like under eating. control. Like you can some, do it under the, and control. that's why I say you're you're right about the eating thing because, you know, you can eat a meal like a European and not fucking stuff your face with a supersized Whopper value meal, right? Mm-hmm. And you get your caloric intake to keep your body full and you're in a good place and your day goes on. The same thing is with masturbation. You could fucking go in your mind and jerk it off and be done in a couple minutes and go on with your day. It's when you fucking get into page number 347 of Pornhub 
that it becomes an issue. It's a bit of an issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like the, for me, if I do it at the end of the day, if it's like, if I, if I make it through my entire day without jerking off or potentially getting laid or whatever it is, it's the end of the night. I got bottom of the ninth all struck out. I got nothing left. It's 5 a.m. I sent out all the DMs. No one responded. Mm. It's the, it's the end of the line. And then I go jerk off. It's it's like, okay, fine. You earned it. You tried. <laughs> you know? did your best. Here but we it's go. the morning jerk off that fucks me up. See? I think that is what sets the tone for the rest of the day to just be a failure. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You know what I'm saying? My problem is... I've convinced myself that I need the morning jerk off to start my day almost. And, and here's the logic I have, and maybe I'm wrong, but you tell me what your thoughts are. If I rub one out before I start my day, then I don't start my day thinking about sex and I can just carry on as a normal human being. Whereas if I don't jerk off anytime the wind blows or a girl fucking bends over the shopping store, you know, shopping store, the fucking the grocery, grocery store. store, I'm fucking thinking about sex. Yeah. So it kind of purges those thoughts out of my head and I can start my day. There's some validity to that, but I think ultimately it's a negative because you're, you're right. giving in to something that you know. I mean, you are, we started this conversation with knowing that it's bad and it's, well, it's ruining. Well, bad. No, okay. Again, it's. I don't think in and of itself is bad. I think the porn and the like stretching it out for prolonged periods of time is bad. Yeah. The porn, if, you, if you could just jerk off and not think about it and just fucking expel the waste from your body and fucking go on about your day, that's okay. Yeah, there's no doubt that the porn is bad. There's, the there's is no bad. argument for porn being good. Yeah. It's 100% bad. Evil. Evil. But fucking fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good time. Um, That being said, you actually had a good... Uh, you, you mentioned something that made me kind of think, let's talk DMs for a minute, okay? Yeah. So, obviously, I'm out of the game now, but I was thinking about this the other day when I was just scrolling, and there was an ass that came up on my Instagram yeah. snap story. Or That's how they get you. And it, you know, it triggered me, and then it got me to thinking, and I'm like, what is the end game? Now, you're still in the game somewhat. I mean, you're, playing, you're not playing for keeps like you used to, but you're still out here. You even said you sent out a couple DMs. Do you think that women maliciously place these pictures... To torture us because I don't think it is, it's a mating call anymore. I used to think that women do that as a mating call. Now I think they do it just to be like, look at all these fucking pathetic fuckers that follow me. Am I wrong? I think you're wrong. I think maybe in some instances there. No, no, I don't even think it's that. I think it's the easiest way to get likes and get attention. They're, they're just seeking attention. And if they post a picture of their face, they'll get a little bit of attention. But if they post a picture of their ass, they're going to get the most attention. But see, I, I could see that. OK. But it's hard for me to understand because as a man, I'm not fucking if I wanted attention. I don't know what the fuck I would do if I wanted attention. Well, think about this. When we used to post a video, right? Like it feels good. Right. It, when it, you get the likes. What's what? What's worse than posting something and then not getting the likes? Yeah, not you're right. You put all attention. that effort into it and then you post it. Yeah, exactly. For a girl, maybe she did her makeup and all this shit and then post it and no one gives a fuck. And right. Like, well, fucking let me pull down my pants. You hit that post button. You're looking for the biggest bang for your buck. Right. You want the most return on your submission. And that's you're going to get that with the ass. Sex sells. Sex does sell. And speaking of selling sex, Wednesday at Bottle Blonde, we had... Uh, our annual uh, OnlyFans Appreciation Night. You remember this. Night. How was that? It was actually not bad because I only had to DJ for an hour. Okay. We had some guest DJs that uh, well, were... Wasn't it like a Spanish night? Yeah, the WEPA party. WEPA, yeah. You know, what is the, WEPA? WEPA means like dance, you know? WEPA, like WEPA. Okay. I don't know if it means dance directly. But I think baile is dance, but it's something wrong on those lines. Okay. It's some shit people yell when they're partying. Um, so... Yeah, I'm sure somebody's going to be in the comments like, you stupid fucking cracker. It doesn't mean dance. Well, it means something, okay? It means something along those lines of partying. It has something uh, to do with throwing a party. Yeah, you say whip. I don't know, the, or I don't like say whip, but like, like something. When they light the tacos on fire. Okay, it's probably something around there for, for fucking Puerto Ricans. 
Okay. Is it more Puerto Rican than it I, is? I Mexican? mean, well, I always thought it was a Cuban thing because, like, it's a you know. But I'm pretty sure it's just Hispanics in general. But I think predominantly it's Latinx more, is what we call. Oh it. yes, that's right, Latinx. Because you don't want to be uh, sexist. So, um, yeah. So what, what was that? Okay, so we had the WEPA party. Cool kids, whatever. I come in there, like, oh, we want DJ longer than I was originally anticipating and i was like you know what that's fine by me you're like it gets paid either way fuck no no well i'll be in that this time just this this once. one time you guys can go a little longer so the first guy goes on trash uh second guy goes on he's actually dope and i'm like enjoying it but you know the the staff is like okay are they gonna play anything other than spanish and i'm like well look you when you book web party <laughs> you kind of gotta expect you're not gonna Don't get much outside that. of that. Don't you love like how like what are you what are you doing? Right. What are you doing? This is the party you booked, and then you're wondering if they're gonna play anything other than Spanish. Exactly. That is our industry in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. So the third girl gets on and they're like, Oh my god, this girl's amazing. She's done boil room, this, that, and the third. I don't even know what her name was. She wasn't well, terrible, but let me tell you something. You can play the biggest festival in the world but if you come into any establishment and the music dies not once but twice for 30 seconds at a time and i have to go up there and be like yo we got to play some music and they're like oh we hit that switch and i'm like that's a power strip and they're like oh and i'm like all right you can, can we play some music and then they're just like oh yeah and then they're just like scrolling through the usb drive i'm like fucking play anything like just play music. Wait, this happened two times, two times. during her set. During her set. The and first time, allegedly, it wasn't her fault, so I couldn't freak out on her. But the second time, I got to give it the benefit of the doubt the first time, but I don't know if I can give it the benefit of the doubt two times. So at this point, I'm like, come on, just play something. So I, I still wasn't going to pull the plug on them. I'm like, whatever. You're like, it, it's you not guys, that bad. I don't want to DJ. It's not yeah. bad enough for me to get up there and have to DJ. Well, it's I just didn't want to shit on them. It's like their party, whatever. But I, I just kept feeling like I'm in Wicker Park at one of these like cool parties that's like no one really knows what the fuck they're doing. Yo, that is the new like hipster scene as far as I could tell. In Houston, at least, mm -hmm. is like the Spanish like underground, like that whole boiler room. I mean, they had a good, yeah. The boiler room came to Houston and it was all um, uh, Spanish music. What it was particularly cumbia. Okay. So like I can that, see that. It, and those are all like the hipsters and that like Paradise yeah. Palace and all that shit very, happening in very Latinx vibes. Is yeah, like they're they've they've taken the reins on the hipsters. And I'm not scene. gonna completely shit on this girl because I, I I thought a lot of her, her set was dope, but it's just at some point I don't understand how you become a superstar without knowing the basics of keeping music playing. That is, it's, well, it's pretty it's, elementary. It's pretty aligned with what's happening in the world. And where we're at geographically. Yes. So it didn't really surprise me. But it then all adds up. The GM's like, yo, get them the fuck off. And I'm like, fuck. All right. So I go up there and I'm like, hey, listen, you know, after the second time he wants us to switch. And like, they were cool about it, but they were also kind of like, I mean, of course they're going to feel shitty about it. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't want to shit on them. It wasn't. Like, I, I wanted nothing more than just to sit back and watch the night go on. Drink you know a I'm Modelo, Drink listen a couple, to some cumbia. A couple gallons of tequila and enjoy myself. Smoke some hookah, you know? Yeah. But then I'm made to look like the bad guy. You know what I'm saying? The, the management loves that. Management loves that. to do that. They love to use you as a pawn in the, the game. The higher up you get on the totem pole, the quicker you become a pawn in the game. And I've seen it with other managers that have to fire people. And it always comes from the person who seems the nicest. But I don't usually have to do that thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's usually just, you know, do your job. So it was a little hard on me. I don't know. Have you ever had to pull anyone? Um, I don't think so. I can't think of a particular time that stands out when I had to pull somebody. Because honestly, I... I and this is happening more often than it did back in the day. Like I, I feel like I'm more of an asshole. Like I, like I care less about my job. Mm -hmm. I used to care a lot more about my job. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I, I would bite my tongue mm -hmm. and 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 play it safe and be a schmoozer and 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 not really make waves. But if if management 
were to tell me to go pull them and I didn't want to, it was like somebody who I didn't want to have a bad relationship with or something. I would probably be like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Like you can go, you want, you book them, you want them to stop playing so you can go tell them. Yeah. Because you know I, what I mean? My thought process when I did that was like, these people probably think that I'm being spiteful and that I'm in the office like, D- manager, take them off. They right. suck. That wasn't the that wasn't the case. I honestly, I though I I do think that it's, I won't say unexcusable because anybody can have a mistake happen, but like the two times thing was kind of like all right, this is a little ridiculous. But you know what? I'm not even gonna blame them because how many times back home did the big names? Have this happen, or one big name more specifically? And I think Give me you know a little what I'm talking hint. about. Are we talking bombs of my love? Well, that could have been one, but there was a more specific person that played at underground. Underground. Give me a give me a date. I mean, there was no date. Set he was the, a resident. Set the scene for me. All right, DJ's up there, and the music turns off like clockwork. Okay, I know who you're talking about. Okay, but like I like clockwork. the guy. I like him too. I like. I like him too, and I'm not talking shit. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> and I honestly like this this girl. She was nice, and she, and and I enjoyed some of the music she was playing. And I I'm not. I talking shit. Don't think I'm talking but shit. This is nothing I'm just new. being real here. I'm talking about the things that no one wants to fucking Th- admit. This is nothing new though. Like we we've known forever that status and and you know social status and networking outweigh talent. Every yeah. single time. This is not a new thing. This is a fact. This is a part of the game. Right. And 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 it's not yeah, it's nothing new. I mean, there's been shitty DJs since way before we were ever DJing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot more of them now. There's a lot more of them now. That's true because it's a lot more accessible. And I think that uh I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. I don't I don't I'm trying to try lightly because I don't want to be an asshole. But I'm also trying to be real. I'm on the opposite page. I mean, you saw me last Friday. I was mad. I was angry. I'm angry. Well, I want to burn it. everything down. I want a full reset. Like we got I got a full I, reset two years ago, and it only made things worse. So let's not jump to conclusions right now. All right, let's 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 mull these things over and let's work to make them better. We don't need any more resets. I need a okay? full reset. I'm just not happy in the position that I'm in, and I. It's hard. This is the this is the main focus of I feel like every podcast. It always comes back to this: Is it Houston or is it post COVID? I don't know. It's hard I think to it's post COVID, and I'll say because outside of the DJ and nightlife thing, um, anytime I call anything online for any kind of customer service, it's the most fucking horrendous. I feel like I'm at the DMV on the phone. Yeah, like they're like fuck you, and I'm like I just want to get a tracking number if I could, and they're like. Go fuck yourself. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, thanks. Because they know that what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to get in the car and drive to Charlotte, North Carolina and beat the shit out of fucking Donald and his cub and his cubby, whatever the fuck he's I think that would phone. be an incredible series. Just hunting like down YouTube shitty series. fucking. I, I, I could be into Traveling that. Traveling to India and to just beat the fucking fuck kidnapping, Philippines. kidnapping customer service reps. Hog tying them by up. name, <laughs> just 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 make a little list. I, that might be actually illegal to even talk about, but you know. Uh, well, we're just proposing a, a series. Yeah, it, it could TV be fictional. It could be, be fictional. fictional. But I'll be honest, I would watch it. You know what? <laughs> you actually got something good here. <laughs> Think about this, right? You know, have you ever watched the Repo Man show? Yeah. Imagine that, but. With the premise of what you just said. Right. And it's like, all right, so today, and it's like, you know, fucking like kind of shaky cam. It's like, today we got, we, we recorded this conversation with Sprint. Check this out. And it's like, sorry, sir. This is the best we can do. And you're like, fuck you. Yeah. I'm going to fucking come kidnap you. And then they hang up and on then, you. And then they hang you up. Swore. And then you're like, the, the camera gets a little more shaky. You stand up. You're like, fuck it. We're going. Pack the shit. And you know, get next the, thing, you're on a fight. You land in fucking, uh, you know, Nebraska or wherever their fucking call center is, and you just come in covertly and you, hi, I'd like to speak to Steven. Steven, yeah. And then like, hold on one second. Steven's like, what's up? You're just like, <laughs> bam, beat the shit out of him. It's, that would be so 
Amazing. Someone needs to do that. It's literally like the end of Jay and Silent Bob, where they go and they find everyone who was talking shit to him online. Yeah. And knock they at the got door. The fucking phone book. They're like, oh, are you Charles? Fucking, you know, you go by this on moviepoopshoot.com. This is your username. And he's like, yeah, why? And then they just beat the beat fuck the out of him. That would be the most satisfying show to ever watch. <laughs> yeah. Because every day I have to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, I just want to watch the world burn. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if it's the sobriety. I don't know if it's Houston. I think it's got to do with DJing. Could be depression. Let me tell you about this. <laughs> DJing, I used to love the 30 minutes back and forth thing. Mm -hmm. But being sober, it's really fucking hard to get into a groove. It takes about 30 minutes yeah. for you to like get your your feet your 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 feet wet in the game and yeah. and get a nice groove going and build the room and and get them to know your style and get them on your pacing and all this and that and then when that 30 minutes is over you're done and you got to do it again yeah. like that's all you're doing is just and and each setting the room you never really get a chance to fucking grab them by the nuts yeah and i i i think you're totally right about that and i think we should talk about that the switch over because uh even like i i notice this usually on sundays when i come in after you or rectic and it's like the room will have like a good vibe and i come in and it's like i could even play that same vibe but i don't know if it's like because like the selection you know your 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 playing is is based off of the last three tracks that it seems to me like okay he's playing drake you know best i ever had let me go into this you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. it'll work and then the crowd just kind of like i watched them just like almost leave instantly you know what i'm saying like and i feel like shit because i'm like what the fuck am i doing wrong yeah but i don't think it's that i think it's that like there's some sort of like you know energy i don't know what you call it you know well i think connection with the crowd whoever's on yeah has that connection and the, and the crowd is used to their pacing and the way that they're mixing and it's it's just a, it's like a very abrupt change and whether people even really notice it or not, it could be like subconscious. It's a, it's a change. It's a switch. And then, you know, that could trigger the, the thought of like, oh, it's, it's 10 o'clock or it's seven o'clock. Let's go check out this other place. That's we've been here for the say. last yeah. four or five hours. Yeah. Now it's time to go over there. Like that's what triggers it is a, is a switch up. It's yeah, because they'll see the shit. Or, or I even think sometimes they'll see the DJ switch over and be like, oh, they're switching shifts. God, well, how long have we been here? Right. Yeah, you're right. That could be part of it too. Um, I will say when that young lady left and I got on, a lot of her falling left with her. And I yeah. don't know if that was because she was like, yo, fuck this place. Well, it's because you were white. I'll that tell you right could now. Be, that could be a very well possibility. They don't, Latinx, they don't like white. Anyone who's not white, they don't really love white people at the moment. Yeah, we're, we're not, not, very we're not on the uh, top list of uh, races at the moment. <laughs> but, you know, that's okay. We had a strong run. We had a though. strong I'm run. I'm not going to say that we didn't have a strong run. I'm not going to say that we didn't, uh, you know, take that <laughs> <laughs> over the course of history. But, you know, it's going to take a little while to, to uh, ease our way back in. Yeah, exactly. We're going to have to ease our way That's back That's why, in. for now, I'll be transracial and identify as Hispanic. <laughs> yeah. From now on, you'll call me a Gleno. You should get more neck tats and hit the, hit the tanning salon at least twice a week. I might need to dye my head, too. And you should dye. If you dyed your hair black, you're in. That's it. You're fucking fully in. If I do that and wear sunglasses? It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Done deal. Case Hand closed. Over, champ. There it is. There you have it. There it is. There you have it. So, uh, what else should we talk about? Let's talk about music. You know, I, I feel like we we have this platform, and we're music lovers and connoisseurs, and we're better DJs. Are we? Well, you might. I be I am, me. and you know what? Why I am lately getting that vibe back is my Thursday night party. Good. Not to su shamelessly plug my party right now, but. It's giving me life and enjoying what I'm doing. Not necessarily that it's like became the craziest party on earth yet, though I do have aspirations that it'll be that one day. Yeah. Um, it's making me enjoy going to work. When I can do a five hour set by myself and not even be not even be phased, like I'm just like, oh damn, I can't believe it's already been five hours. Yeah, that's incredible. It's amazing. It's fucking amazing. And when you don't have like necessarily a palette of songs that you have to stay within parameters, mm -hmm. you can literally 
play whatever the fuck you want. And yeah, you could do that any night technically, but it's like you don't have that pressure of I have to keep this fucking bachelorette party happy and I have to keep this fucking dickhead who bought a bottle of champagne for the yeah, bottle of He wants to hear happy. 42 Doug. You know what I'm you saying? fucking ruin the whole entire vibe that you built up for the exactly. last hour to play he paid this you fucking $15 song. So we could throw $500 in the air. <laughs> That's where we're at. Who the fuck? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Wait a second here. This doesn't fucking add up. If you're fucking throwing money in the club, and you're throwing wads for hours. And then you want to give me twenty dollars to play your fucking shitty trap song so you can feel like a drug dealer? Fuck you. Yeah. That's bullshit. That's fucking bullshit. That's some and it happens a lot. It happens too often. My favorite is when someone comes up and they take the wad out of their pocket. And it's hundreds, 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 hundreds. They get through the hundreds. They give you a five <laughs> just to get to the twenties and give you one. And I'm like, yo, take that back. Like, take, yeah. don't even do not come up here yeah. and sift through your fucking thirteen hundred hundred dollar bills to give me a twenty. Yeah, there's no shot to change the entire direction of the evening so that you can Suck feel like you're in a rap dick. video. Yeah. Yeah, that's not happening on Thursday nights, and I'll be happy about that. Good. You, you should You know what be. I'm saying? My Thursday night is actually ruined. What happened? We fucked up. We fucked up by bringing it to a club. We fucked up uh, by bringing it to lose, Washington sold Street. Soul. We sold our soul. That's Talk exactly what we did. Give me the details, because I We're see getting, you guys are, are, are linking up with the, the Meat Mojo, is it? Yeah, they put Meat Mojo on steak night. It's great. Bunch of Asians who like hip-hop. Is the perfect foundation for an all house music party you oh, know yeah yeah it's so we we fucked up those guys spend money they spend money for sure and the club makes money and we're making money and it's great but i make money every other night of the week and yeah. i want to make less money but i want to be able to enjoy enjoy my night and play yeah. whatever the fuck i want and it's smoke almost weed like in the booth food for the soul yeah, you need that. And you we had that. that. We had that for a minute. And then yeah. we went to the nightclub and just fucking ruined it. So, I mean, you guys all like hip hop. Can't you like play hip hop house remixes? Yeah, there's a lot of that. But you know, if it's you're if you're same. a hip hop guy, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's really not the same. Though I will say No Good makes some dope hip hop remixes. Yeah, it's great. It's great music, but it's not it's not it's almost like watered it. down house or yeah. watered down hip hop. Yeah. It's not you can't truly be both. You know what I'm saying? And there are some that get close to hitting the mark. I will say that uh was that Destructo that had a couple house hip hop songs that were kinda he, he's dope. He's got the one with Yo Gotti, he's got he's the got one, one with YG. YG. Yeah. Those are like cool, those. like they still very feel much feel like a house track, but the rapper is like it works. Yeah. It's not it doesn't feel like it's a mashup. Chami's got the track with Gunna. Yeah, that one's dope. I always like that one. Even though that didn't do as good as I thought it was gonna do. Yeah. I really thought that was gonna Because it's not like those aren't crossovers where like you're not gonna get someone who wants to hear Gunna to appreciate how Chami, yeah. That's it's for just sure. not gonna happen. And to be honest, you're probably not gonna get a Chami fan that's like, Oh my god, Gunna on a Chami. That I feel like is more maybe yeah, realistic. Maybe yeah, right, yeah, right. But um but yeah, I mean, well, we'll never really hear a Gunner song again. Um, what is he arrested? What what yeah, happened? You, you been under a rock or what? Come on, man. You know I don't keep up. You with didn't these know guys. Young Thug and Gunner like arrested and probably never seen the light of day ever again. What'd they do? Conspiracy to commit murder. Uh, That's racketeering. It? Conspiracy to commit murder is kind of serious when the person gets murdered. Oh, did they? He yeah. they went through with it. Yeah, they went through with it. So it's not only conspiracy; it's actual. He they they murder say charge. that they they had like a gang. Right. And the gang like carried out murders in Atlanta and they were like they have like record. They had like a 10 year case on them, the feds. And they had like recording of, of him telling people to kill people. And yeah, it's 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 a wrap. Gun is out. Gun is out. Young Thug's out. Young Thug's out. I do like Young Thug a lot. I like Young Thug Young a lot. Young Thug's too. fantastic. But I mean, they're saying I, I mean, there's, you know, oh, they're going to snitch and they're going to get out. But who are you going to snitch on when you're the ringleader? That's my question. There's you know always someone that can. I mean, I'm sure there's on, somebody they can switch on. But I, when you're talking about murder and you're talking about multiple murders, it's pretty much a wrap for those guys. Plus, I, from what I understand, the DA wants to make a, uh, an example out of them, so it, it's it's a wrap for them. It's good. Maybe um, if they get out, I'm sure that we'll have them 
booked for a Sunday night. It's, <laughs> that's kind of our thing now. Uh, I mean, you know, you get a you get a discount when they get out of prison. <laughs> it's kind of our thing now. Maybe they could get like a work release. You think? Oh, now you're they talking. Get a work release and come do a, host the night. Yo, maybe do a couple songs. That's like, what is it? Who's the, who's the other one that got fucking like three life sentences just recently? Uh, the guy who made a song about murdering the people they murdered. Um, YFM Lucci was that YFM Lucci or who was that? God, I can't keep up, man. There's too many fucking letters and all these guys. ESG, fucking, uh, uh, f- uh, who's the new? Who's the new hot? Finesse two times. Finesse two times. Yeah, uh, Money Man. I don't. Yeah. I don't. It all sounds the Big same. Big Boogie. It's all. It's all. I was at Polecats last night, and and I was actually thinking to myself. How do these girls know when the song changes? Because they tell them, get up on stage for three songs. Yeah. And then they play, you know, like a, a Migos, Finesse Two Times, EST, fucking 42 Doug track, one after the other. Yeah. And it all, I don't know the difference between the tracks. The drums are all the same. Like, the BPMs are all the same. They all sound the same. Yeah. How, I'm like, how do they know when they're supposed to switch off stage? I mean, that's a good point. Uh, but, you know, these women, they love songs so they know them by heart they know the words yeah it's true i'm getting a little tired of little baby i gotta be honest i mean it was cool like and and he did his thing and he's got a couple tracks and he's got some bars to be honest for 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 that rap for that genre of rap i would say yes he has some bars he's got some bars but um i don't know man i'm just tired of uh, yeah yeah he doesn't Um, have any range uh, and it's like his next song I want to say my and it's like, but everyone knows the words. When I play the little baby freestyle, everyone knows word for word for word. And I play that song probably fifty times, and I still don't know what the fuck he's saying. And it's not because I'm white and old, okay? It's because he's mumbling. It's mumble rap. It's mumble rap. I don't want. I never wanted to use that because I'm like, oh, that's like an old person term. But like, the more I hear it, the more I'm like, he's got. God damn it, they're fucking mumbling. Yeah, I mean, and that's why I prefer to play Nicki Minaj Starships. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Fuck you, Mr. Ease. I don't know, man. I would rather probably uh, listen to mumble rap for 12 hours straight than listen to Starships for two times. I don't know, man. It's dreadful for me to, to even play hip, to think about what hip hop songs to play because... I either feel like I'm playing the same shit that I've been playing forever mm-hmm. and it it feels stale to me or I'm playing this new shit that I don't even know what where to start. Like these guys don't even start. They don't make music in like 16 bar yeah, verses, eight changed. bar hooks right. uh, with the intro. Like yeah. I don't I, I just fucking I'll reverb out of one and play the next one. Yeah. I don't even know how to mix them. Sometimes the, the, the hooks aren't even like a straight eight. They're just like six and then it stops and then like four bars of rap and then six again. And it's like, I don't know if they're trying to be different, if that's like the thing, or if they I just don't give a fuck. Stupid. I think they're I think stupid. They're really stupid. I think they're fucked up on lean and I don't think they give a fuck because they know either way people are going to buy it. Now, let me tell you, while I talk all this shit about mumble rap, my hot pick of the week, Lil Yachty Poland. Fucking banger. I saw someone post that and I have not listened to oh, it. Oh, it's yet. a banger. It's a fucking banger. I love that song. And it's so fucking weird. And it's so fucking mumbly. And it's pretty much everything I've been saying I hate for the last 30 minutes on here. Is the music good? Does it have there, like a there's catch something about it, it that I'm like, that's the one. That's the one. Is he blowing up off it right now or what? I, I mean, people are talking, the streets are talking. Uh, I played it the other night and I got a good response out of it. But um, it's a minute and 20 seconds long, and there's definitely no structure to that. Like, it's like... It's a minute it's, and 20 there's like, seconds? There's like three bars, and then he like starts going... Uh, uh, and then all of a sudden he goes... Duh, 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 and does the fucking... Wah, 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 you're, you're not really selling me on it right now. I know! It sounds fucking terrible, but it sounds good in reality. Is it mixed well at least? No, I mean, it's Drake terrible. Can't even fucking the mix first time I played record. it, I played like a rip off of YouTube, I want to say, or something, and it was just, and I'm like, this is fucking horrible. I'm gonna kill myself. And then, 
it got released on one of the platforms. I'm sure it's on Club Killers, but I got off at DJ City and somebody you like don't EQ'd speak the bass. DJ City on this podcast. Okay, sorry. Fuck that. I got it off of another site and it, the the bass was EQ'd out and it, it, it plays well on a system. So, but I'm sure the Club Killers one plays well too. I just haven't had a chance to download it. For I me mean, yet. what the fuck are we doing where where the bootleggers have to re master the tracks that the professional <laughs> artists are putting out? Isn't it a time to be alive? What the fuck is happening? How ass backwards is this world that the bootleggers have to re EQ the tracks? Well, this isn't the first and, time and, this has happened. And the bottle service girls are the ones that are on the fucking flyers. Oh, yeah. Can we talk about that? Oh, uh, yeah. Nothing makes me more mad. Nothing makes me more mad because it just goes along with, like, the whole vibe of this city that is materialistic and and money-driven and you don't have to have any sort of skill whatsoever to, to get respect. Like, in my world... I want I want to know what you can do. What do you offer? What can you bring to the table? What kind of skill have you acquired over your life that is going to make me say, "Damn, you fucking put work in and and have have created something cool or do something or whatever." Like just to have a a nice car doesn't do it. Like to to go to a dealership and put down a sack of money and leave with a car is the same concept as going to Walgreens and pulling out my wallet and leaving with a pack of gum. It's the same skill set. I agree. You know what I mean? Like and I, I'm a car no, connoisseur. You have not no, of purchased vehicles from the dealership. Cars you put in some work. Bust your knuckles up. Build something beautiful, unique. Get in a fucking putting a down payment on a Lamborghini truck and painting it or having it painted orange or green. Does not fucking make you cool. It do, it doesn't. There's but no skill involved. There's nothing in Houston there. that makes you very cool. But that's what I'm saying. That's that's it's it all works together, and I don't get it, and I hate it, and it it makes me angry, <laughs> and I want to fucking light places on fire, and I want to shoot people with flamethrowers, and <laughs> I just I don't know what to do. I need to start playing GTA Online or something. That's what it is. If they have the, the Lamborghini trucks on the GTA Online, you can take out all your frustrations uh, out there. I haven't played GTA in a while. That used but, to be a fun... But you know what movie. I'm saying? Like, do you not respect skill? Do you not respect, like, I, Of course I do. Well, this goes... But this isn't even just a Houston thing, because this goes to the sign of the times. Remember, we used to make videos... And we used to put so much work into making them. I, I, when I look back at them, obviously some of the production subpar to a fucking movie, right? But we put a lot of work comparative to anything else that people put out. Yeah. And then TikTok came out. And the more stupid it was and the more dumbed down it was and the more, like, I noticed, like, videos go viral now because, like, someone drops the phone in the beginning. Like, have you noticed this? This is a thing. And at no. first I thought it was like a, a coincidence, but now I, I realize like the new thing is like when you make a TikTok, like you like accidentally drop your phone or set it weird so people can see you adjust it and then make your TikTok and somehow it makes people watch more because I know it makes me watch it because I'm like, oh, this, well, he fucked up. I got to see this. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just playing on the stupidity of humankind, right? But that's that's that goes back to what you're talking about is the whole thing is like the less skillful or the less talented you are, the more people love you now because it's like it humbles them. No, you know what it is? It makes people who don't fucking do anything with their life feel more a part of it. When you don't create anything dope and then they see you make something subpar, they're like, oh, finally, someone else who fucking sucks as much as me. Yeah, I could. that's relatable. But there's a piece of what you're saying that makes me think that there's like some honesty to it because as much as I hate the shit that the internet is spewing, there is also things that I love. And I'm a consumer of of a lot of media on the internet. And most of what I love is based in honesty. And you're seeing a, you're seeing real people. You're seeing what we're doing. We're sitting here just being honest, talking shit. And I think that there's some honesty to 
uh, having that in the beginning of the video. I, like I'm adjusting my phone. Like I didn't cut this out. I don't care. Like yeah, and, if you want to see, I everyone fucked up does. And it that. doesn't matter. But like it to me, it seems corny because it's like it's not genuine. It's not real. It's thought out. Because let me tell you, anyone who's a fucking creator or anyone who thinks they're a creator spends way more time thinking about what they're making, no matter how fucking uh, sincere and, and organic and, and just putting my fucking shit out there. There's a lot of thought that goes into it. And I think it's faker than actually producing something to, to make it seem like you don't give a fuck. Because I can guarantee anybody who posts anything on Instagram thinks about it fucking 10 times before they click it and probably clicks and, and, and you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's all bullshit. That's my opinion. Yeah. Cause I know how I feel before I post something. I fucking overthink it. And, and for someone just to say, Oh, I don't care. I just put it out there. And it's just perfect. Cause people love it. It's like, fuck you. You're full of shit. Okay. Cause you're a human being just like me and you shit and jerk off too. Yeah. You're not wrong. But uh, speaking of the content that I love to consume, did you see that Rick Rubin was on the Joe Rogan podcast? Look, <sighs> don't fucking do not do not think that you're going to fucking sit here and and put little Yachty on a goddamn pedestal and then start talking shit about Rick Rubin. Listen, if that's what you think you're about to do. I, I know you to strongly reconsider. I know you think, you know. <laughs> But I just want to let you know that from my and listen, I'm a guy who grew up. I had the license to L Beastie Boys cassette tape or or CD, maybe even I think it was a cassette tape actually. Not that I was listening to in the '80s, but I listened to in the '90s. Anyways, Rick Rubin, genius, right? And I'll give him when it comes to like the big beat, fucking doom, ch, doom, ch, beats. Yes, he was the originator. Give him his flowers. That being said, I don't like the direction this is heading. That being said, I have heard multiple stories from musicians that say you that you act like you went to dinner with these guys. First of all, who the fuck are you talking about, and where did you see this on TikTok? No, this is before TikTok. TikTok. Um, okay, so it was a rock band. I can't even remember their name. You know what? Now you make you're, you're ruining the validity of the story. But <laughs> I'll go ahead and say. I don't remember what their name was, but they, they said, that, and this was a, the way they described it, they said they, they paid whatever, you know, $500,000 to have Rick Rubin produce a hit for them on their album. And when they got there, he just sat in the studio, and th this is how they described it. They're like, this fat fuck laid, in the, laid on the couch and had an assistant come and feed him some kind of fucking, like, baba ganoush or some shit. The vegan fucking baba ganoush and 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 stuff it in it and wipe the fucking junk out of his beard as they were feeding him and then he would just lay there and not say anything and then say, oh we should imp improve that kick and then go back to just sitting there and like meditating and then I watched some interviews of him I think he might have even had his own podcast for a while where he was like sitting in front of a trailer or he was on Pharrell's or something and and the way he talks. It just seems like a pump as fuck. He just seems like That's a conceited crazy. asshole. That's crazy because I listened to a consecutive three hours of him sitting there talking, and he sounded like an incredible dude. See? Beauty is an eye of the beholder, my friend. Well, you're watching clips. I'm consuming the whole piece of media. All right, so give it to me. I mean, where do we start? Where do we start? Let's where do start we with start? You, you think he's a humble person? I think he's very humble. He I don't think you need to be humble to be a great person either, though, but especially when it comes to producing something because you could be an asshole piece of shit like R. Kelly, and I'm still going to like your music. So Very strong point. Um, Speaking of which, I played a few R. Kelly jams last night, and people were stepping. They were stepping in the name of love. Oh, yeah, they were. I even played SPM last night. South Park Mexican. The South Park Mexican, and people were rapping along. You need to do a canceled mixtape. Ooh. Ooh. You need to do a whole mixtape of everyone and, that's and, been And canceled. the cover is just all and, them behind bars? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Kanye could be on it now. That's true. You have so much music to choose from. Yeah, it, it, it could be a, a mixtape series. I love these people that are like, uh, you know, these fucking woke shoe stores that are not selling Yeezys anymore. Wait, hey, is that listen, a I'm now? a fucking Jew, all right? <laughs> this is coming straight from the mouth Oh, yeah, of he doesn't Jew. really like Jews right This now. is coming from the descendant of people that survived the Holocaust. 
my fucking grandparents are Holocaust survivors, Jewish as it gets, sell the Yeezys. Sell, all right? What sell. are you doing? Like, you're not, you're not, like, this is just a way for you to feel special, like you're doing something. What are you doing by not selling Yeezys? Are you helping the Jews in any way? What no. the fuck are you doing? I can't hop on that train. You know, like, I started seeing on my Twitter, Sarah Silverman's tweeting, oh, we need to take it more serious when people are attacking Jews, where we've been attacked, all this and that. It's like the whole BLM shit, when that happened, the whole Stop Asian Hate shit, yeah. when that, it's like our turn right now, yeah. and I just can't. You're not going to jump on it? Join it. Stop, no. stop Jewish hate? I can't join it. I can't. I respect I can't. that. I respect that because you're putting your your money where your mouth is. A hundred percent. The time has came, and it's your turn to feel sorry for your, yourself. And I your will race. not do it. I respect. I that. refuse. I fucking refuse to be a victim. And as a white male, who's <laughs> probably the most hated race right now, to be honest, I I I can't give a fuck either. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Hate it. I don't care. Whatever. It is what it is. Um, right, back to Rick Rubin. Wait, wait, wait. What did he say about Jews, though? I don't uh, even he, know. <laughs> he said like, like, I don't want to know now. He said, you have to look up the tweet. He was like, I just woke up from a nap, but when, when I get out, I'm I'm going Death Con 30 on all the Jews. <laughs> what? <laughs> some shit. He said some Like, he talked shit. about killing Jews? Is that legal? I believe the word Death Con 30 was used. Well, what I believe does that the even phrase mean? Death Con, Death Con 30. I, I really don't know. I don't know. But he got kicked off of Twitter. He's kicked off of Instagram. Oh, he's banned? Yeah. He, they gave him the old Donald Trump, huh? They gave him the old Donnie T. Well, I kind of saw that one coming. Yeah. Do you think that's because of the Jewish statement and because some of those places are owned by Jews? Or do you think it's because cancel culture just... I, no. The, no cancel nothing... culture, the cancel culture monster was hungry and needed to be fed? That's exactly what it is. Okay. Okay. It's been a minute since they've had anything to, like, like these people. I was gonna that, say there hasn't been a lot of riots lately. So yeah, well, maybe the Jews will start rioting. If the Jews riot, maybe I'll join, <laughs> just for the hell of it, <laughs> just, just to say I was there. Yeah, but uh, it, it's these people that 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 have a feeling of being a good person by doing something so minor that has no real repercussions or or you know meaning in the world by taking yeezys out of your shoe store like yeah. what like please explain to me what that's really doing other than just feeding your little shitty i want to feel good about myself ego yeah you know what i mean yeah and and it's been a while since they've had anything to do that about their fucking shitty little egos were hungry <laughs> and and this is their this is the new thing Oh, you got to feed the beast. It's like my boy who works at a school was like, oh, man, I wanted to get a pair of Yeezys, but now I can't. Like, I can't wear Yeezys as yeah. a teacher to my school because I'll get in trouble. Yeah. Isn't that fucking crazy? But look, I always thought about this growing up as a child, and I would, like, hear the stories in history class of the Salem witch trials. And I'm like, man, it's it's good that that doesn't happen anymore. But I'm like... Is that a human nature thing? Is that going to come full circle again? And one day people will just be looking for, you know, something to fucking, you know, need to consume and destroy. And I think we've reached that point in humanity, like you said, with the cancel culture monster needing to be fed, where people need to fucking destroy something to feel important. And you can say that you're doing it because these people are insecure or, or in, in, in what's the word I'm looking for here? Fucking in... Uh, what the it, people that are being yeah, victimized yeah. by this thing, like people that are, are they don't have a voice. No, no, no. I'm saying that, that you know the the people like the Kanye's and the Donald Trumps are deserve it because they're pieces of shit. But like, okay, people being a piece of shit is nothing new. Okay, like any yeah. politician we've ever had in the history of humanity, well, in even, any country is a piece of shit. Let's go further back than that. What what do we? How did this country even get? discovered exactly i mean my man came over here and just started raping and killing yeah like well i mean they go, definitely canceled him too so well, i mean yeah. yeah he's canceled but but your whole point is this is nothing yeah new. this is nothing new there's always going to be shitty people but i think the whole like like burn them down shit is like is is like it's something almost equally as evil, in it, my opinion. A hundred percent, you're right. Because it doesn't come from like a, we're doing this to rid the world of evil to make this place a better place. It's more just like, fuck that guy, we could destroy him. 
Let's uh, destroy him. We haven't destroyed anybody. This guy did something bad. Let's fuck him up. Remember what they did to Nini's Deli? Oh, that was bro, completely, I, bro. Completely that was like went un unscathed. Like nobody who did. Bro, that they got literally in burned it down. They for, they surrounded it for fucking three days straight. Marched around it for and anybody, burned it to the ground. For anybody who doesn't know. Nini's Deli was a famous place Fire. in Chicago. Fantastic Cuban sandwiches. They had the amazing best. food, and it was like this family-owned, like great Chicago staple in in West Town. And I'm not 100 percent sure what happened. But I'll, during I'll the tell BLM you the story. Riots, and there's actually they made a documentary about it. Did you watch it? Uh, no, I haven't watched it yet. But I remember the whole thing unfolding. So what happened was, the guy is like a religious guy, right? So he, during the time when the whole BLM riots and everything was happening, he decided to literally get on a soapbox. And this is like a picture, if you will. It's Chicago, inner city, not downtown, but, you know, it's city neighborhood where, you know, it's it's very closely together. Something like if you ever seen Do the Right Thing. And I, I always thought about that through the whole thing. I was like, this is like Do the Right Thing in 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 reality real life and uh so he was on his his uh, soapbox with the microphone and a speaker and a couple of his friends nothing nothing new i mean this has been happening on state street with the state street preacher for you know forever in chicago but he voiced his opinion at a bad time when the uh, cancel culture monster is on the prowl and he i think the comments that really got him fucked was one he said that the police is not the number one killer of blacks in black neighborhoods. He said that it was blacks because of the black on black violence. And I don't think he said it from a place where he's like, you know, being racist or anything like that. He was just saying what he felt was his truth. And if we're going to be completely honest, facts are facts. The statistics don't lie. So he said that. And I think he said another thing about like, Gays not being allowed into heaven. I remember him talking about gays because he was talking from the Bible and shit. Right, and which the is his religion, about. which is his freedom in a fucking free country. The same free country that allows a transsexual to fucking parade the streets with his dick out or, you know, a fucking <laughs> heterosexual to fucking... You okay, know, see right. a pair of tits. We, we, we get it. We get it. We're we're gonna get canceled. The further we go on this, we we understand that the man made some points. No, 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 that no. Were hear not, me out. Hear me out. The only gotta tell. The whole point is to explain what happened. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. yeah. Deli. But, but what I'm saying is this. I'm not saying I agree with what he's saying. What I'm saying is, if you really want all these freedoms, it can't be one sided. For sure. That's that's, that's 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 what bothered me the most about it. Not because he's a Bible thumper and I. Not because I believe what all he says, right? But because I don't think we can limit people that speak. Even if their truth is bullshit, that's their truth. That's their truth, and it's not the truth. And if you want to make a better point, if you think that their point is not valid and, and garbage, you can outspeak them with your point if it's better. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like That's the whole thing. That is the freedom of speech. This man has his right to say whatever he wants to say. And then you think that what you have to say is more important and makes more sense. So you make a better argument for it. Exactly. And if your argument is better, more people will follow you. Less people will follow him. But rather That's than debate, the, the Gen X's screamed and did everything they could the, to destroy Nini's his Deli presence. was pink. It was a pink building. Yeah. And they painted it black. Yeah. They painted the whole thing black. That's straight vandalism. Yeah, and 100%. And, and 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 among intimidation, whatever else you want to say, and they literally burned it down. And they burned it down, and it, and nobody got in trouble. It was not like a, a crime scene. It yeah. was not. There was Nothing. no repercussions. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was just like was he deserved it. Yeah, that's insane. It's fucking insane. That's insane. And it really happened. And. On that and it note, was a real place that I used to go get my guava empanadas, right? <laughs> guava, goat cheese, and fantastic hibiscus lemonade. Let's not pretend the man didn't have great food. If I can go eat at fucking Dante's Pizza on uh, Milwaukee, <laughs> which is a Satanist <laughs> pizza place that yeah. literally you go in, there's pentagrams and like quotes from the Satanic yeah. Bible, and I'm a Christian yeah. and I eat there, <laughs> then I can eat at fucking Nini's Deli too, okay? That's such a good point. That's such a good point.
That's so good. Dante's Pizza is literally a Satanist pizza. And place. not like a hidden message Satanist. It's like, yo, if you eat this pizza, you're selling your soul, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll try it out. The Slice. pepperoni's good, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, people just take shit too serious, and people are fucking pussies. That's, that's it. wild. That's it. Yeah, that's why I'm not I'm not with that victim shit. No. But let's fucking wrap it up. I think that's a good that's a good spot to end yeah, it. We purged a little bit. I probably purged. get canceled for this. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, the, the cancel thing's over, in my opinion. It's only as if you let them cancel you. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying. cancelable because I'm not rich. We don't make any money off this, so fucking cancel me. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I really don't. I'm 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 looking to get canceled. <laughs> I think we found our place. I'm looking to get canceled. I want more people to know who I am. I'm on the internet because I'm trying to make a name for myself. So if you want to help me out and put me on the news, that would be great. Would Any be publicity is good publicity. So if you're watching right now and grinding your gears and angry as fuck with your send pink hair and CNN. your mask on your face, go ahead and send it to CNN. The kids could use some exposure. You know what I'm saying? Club Killers is not fucking with us right now. We're out here, dog. Right, we don't yeah. represent Club Killers. We're just on their platform. Yeah. We just snuck through the back door. <laughs> but if you're... Uh, Especially you know, uninvited guests through the back door. If you are enjoying the things that we're uh, talking about, go ahead and leave a comment. If you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're not enjoying what you're seeing, leave a comment too. Because it, we'd love to hear from you. Right. Hit the algorithm. Get us going. Light, Ignite it. Yeah. Light it up. Tell Light us it up that like you hate Delhi. That was like a big part in the beginning of our whole shit on the internet. Was like people that hated what we were doing, but yeah. but the haters are the ones that speak the most and they get the shit going. And they the actually most. watch the most. Too. Yeah, they watch the most. It's so, great. Shout out to but you. Yeah, guys. we'll see you guys next time. Episode sixty-seven, Party with Strategy podcast, the Strategy and Dolo show. The kids are back. We're at uh. Battle Blonde tonight. Yep. Um. Hopefully it's my last night there ever And I'll never be back Because I want to fucking kill myself every time I leave But that's a conversation for another day Happy Sober October Happy Sober October <laughs> <laughs>